From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Don Wilkins, Johnny. Prime Mutual Limited. Oh, hi, Don. Thanks for the Christmas present. Well, just don't take out the cork near an open flame. Yeah. Uh, say, do you know anything about a guy named Mel Pryker? Nothing good about him. Why? Got himself killed last night. Murdered. Pryker was born to be murdered. Maybe so, but not at our expense. We're holding a $100,000 policy on him. Wow. Who's the beneficiary? His uh, partner, Nick Shern. Nick Shern? You picked a fine pair of rats. Yeah, I know that now. The New York police are holding Shern, but they've got no evidence. Go down there and check it out for us, Johnny. If Nick did the killing, we're off the hook. Any witnesses? One, apparently, the hat check girl in that nightclub of theirs. What's her story? I wish I knew. She's disappeared. We've got to find her, Johnny, before some of Nick's hoodlums find her. Don, maybe they already have. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Trimutual Insurance Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenditures during my investigation of the Nick Shern matter. Item 1, 2280, transportation to New York, tips and incidentals, and taxi fare to the office of Lieutenant Ed Rafferty, Homicide Division, the man in charge of the case. Oh, hiya, Johnny. How have you been? Not bad, Ed. How's the homicide business? Terrible. Did you look at that teletype? Shoplifting. Five complaints right in a row. The week before Christmas, that's all we get. Shoplifters. Mel Pryker wasn't shoplifting. Oh, you working on it, Johnny? Yeah, the insurance angle. Nick Shearns, the beneficiary. A hundred grand policy. Oh, you got a tough one, boy. Shearn killed him all right, but I don't think we're going to be able to stick him. Come on in the office. Hey, you know what that kid of mine wants for Christmas? Marilyn Monroe? No, next year, Johnny. He's only ten, you know. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. No, he, uh, he wants a motorbike. Can you tie that? Ten years old, and he says he needs a motorbike. <laughs> Have a chair. Okay. Well, look, I know a factory representative here who'll make you a good deal on one, Ed. Eh? Oh, now, forget it, Johnny. No, I was 14 before I even had a pair of roller skates. And then I had to buy them myself. Yeah, kids are spoiled today. That's a half of what's wrong with them. Uh, ah, there's a file on the case. What little we've got. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, how'd it happen, Ed? Uh, you mean, how do I think it happened? That's good enough for me. Mel Pryker and Nick Shern were both in the rackets for years, as you probably know. Yeah, I've heard rumors. Well, a while back, they teamed up and opened a string of supper clubs. That's where Pryker got it, in their main club, the Chez Colette. Strictly legitimate, huh? Well, more or less, I guess. They could afford to be. The dough they were making and arguing over, according to the word around. That's the reason for the killing, the way you see it. Sure. Nick figured if half was good, all the take would be twice as good. And the insurance on top of it. Ah, you're a fast one, Johnny. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, several people heard the shots about 2.30 in the morning, it was, right after the club closed, but none of them bothered to report it. The cleanup crew came in at 3 and found Pryker's body. He was lying in his office, shot twice, gun on the floor beside him, no prints. It was his own gun, and it was kept there in his desk. Where was Nick Shern? Well, we picked him up an hour later at another one of their clubs. The manager was with him, and... Uh, Oh, Benny Stark. Now, he used Benny. to... Benny, yeah, I know. Trigger man for Nick's mob in the old days. Fifteen years overdue for hanging. <laughs> That's our Benny. Anyhow, they, they both swear that Nick was there from 1.30 on. Uh-huh. What about a paraffin test, Ed? Positive. Clear to the elbow. And you can throw it out the window. What do you mean? Earlier that evening, Nick spent two hours at a shooting gallery uptown firing a pistol. Ooh, smart, huh? He really planned for it. He really did. But without a witness, we haven't got a chance. I understand there was a witness... Some girl who was mixed up in it. Easy, Johnny. You're talking to a Rafferty. Hmm. So the girl's Irish. Miss Kathleen O'Dea. Old country, back three generations. County Kildare. <laughs> then naturally, she's as innocent as a newborn babe. Naturally. Then how does she figure? Well, a taxi driver who knows her said that he saw her leave the club five minutes after the shot. She denied it, said that she left at closing time. Well, now, in my book, she was lying. Scared to talk, huh? Paralyzed. And with plenty of reason. You know Shern's reputation. Mm. What about the cab driver? 
Now, he changed his story. He said it might have been some other girl he saw. Oh, no, no. Tell me, Ed. Let me guess. Uh, that's right. His name's O'Toole. Yeah. And I forgot to mention that Kathleen's pretty. Naturally. Anyhow, I let her go. I have to. And when I went around to talk to her this morning, she'd flown the coop. Any chance I'm a next boy's grabbed her? I don't think so. It looked more like she came home, packed in a hurry, took her kid, and blew. Kid? Ah, eight-year-old daughter. Irish and a mother, too. I was on sacred ground. Oh, I was fingering me gun. <laughs> no, seriously, Johnny. Would you find her? She may be able to break Nick's alibi, and it's our only chance. And it might be her only chance. Nick Sharon's not the boy to leave a loose end lying around. I know. I've got 30 men checking bus depots, airlines. And no luck, huh? In this mess, at this time of year, I'm a hard-boiled cop, Johnny. I've got no Christmas spirit. I'm glad it only comes once per annum. Well, there's not very much to go on, that's for sure. <clears throat> I'll see what I can turn up, Ed. Check with you later. All right, that's fine. Oh, oh, oh by the way, Johnny. Yeah? Uh, about that friend of yours. What friend? Uh, the guy with the motorbikes. Uh, how, how would I be getting in touch with him? Oh, yeah. His name's Ralph Sterner. He's in the phone book, office in the Mackley building. Hard-boiled cop. <laughs> well, uh, the kid's only young once. Yeah, sure. Now, you find that O'Dare girl. Find her, keep her alive, and get her to talk. How long have I got to find her? Uh, what do you mean? Nick Shearn. How much longer can you hold him? Johnny, he was turned loose an hour ago. So that was it. A lot of maybes, a lot of questions, and a lot of pressure. A job to be done and done fast. Find one Kathleen O'Dare, former hat check girl at the Shea Colette. Keep Nick Shearn's hoodlums away from her and persuade her to talk. And three to one, Nick was looking for her too. He was free now, on the loose. And he might be anywhere. Only the way it turned out, he wasn't just anywhere. He was in one particular place. Johnny. Park right smack in front of the precinct station. Over here, Johnny. He was sitting in the back seat of a sedan, and his trigger man, Benny Stark, was at the wheel. Been a long time, hasn't it, Johnny? About five years, as I remember it, Nick. It was that warehouse robbery over in Queens when you got away with $40,000 worth of furs. Uh uh, you've forgotten. I was acquitted on that one. Oh, yeah, I know. After they pulled the only witness out of the East River, his feet in a bucket of cement. Just coincidence. i never seen him before. You've seen Miss O'Dare before. Sure, I have. She works for me. She's a good kid, Johnny. So I hear. Well, I wouldn't harm a hair on that girl's head. She'll be relieved when I tell her that. Get in. I want to talk to you. No, no, no. Sorry, Nick. I like it fine, just the way it is. In the car, I'd be outnumbered. You got me all wrong, Johnny. I don't play that way anymore. What about Benny? Has he reformed, too? Well, if that's what... <laughs> Benny, go take a walk. Yeah, boss, but... I said go take a walk. Okay. Get in, Johnny. What's on your mind, Nick? You uh, working on this case? Yeah, I'm on it. Why? That's what I figured. I was talking to my lawyer in there and saw you go to Rafferty's office. I guess the insurance company's going to try to welch on that claim. It's your party, it? Nick. You talk. I got a better idea. What's that? You know, it's real nice out in Las Vegas this time of year, Johnny. A man can have a lot of fun out there for the next month with... Maybe $10,000 to play with? What man are you talking about? You. I don't have $10,000. You will. 30 minutes from now, if you say the word. Oh, Nick, you're lucky we're not standing out there on the sidewalk. In a car seat, I haven't got room to swing. Still a fool, huh? I don't know. Why don't you write me about it? You'll have plenty of time. Up there in the desk cell. Suppose I didn't make any claim on that policy. And you wouldn't have any reason to stay on a case. No sale, Nick. A hundred grand is a lot of money. I'd want to find out why you didn't make a claim. You know why. You're out to pin this on me, and so are the cops. A man with a record hasn't got a chance. You should have thought of that before you killed Mel Pranker. Want to know something, Johnny? I didn't kill him. Well, I'm betting you did. What well, do you care who killed him? You're not shedding any tears over it. No, but I'd sure hate to see you get away with it. And I'd hate it even more if anything happened to that girl. Kathy O'Dare? Now, what could happen to her? She just might fall in the river. She probably thinks she's safe as long as she hides from the police and refuses to talk. She doesn't know you very well. You had me all wrong, Johnny. You know, you hear a lot about peace on earth, goodwill toward men around this time of year. But I don't have much goodwill toward the kind of rat you are. 
And I figured there'd be more peace on earth if you weren't on it. Push me, and maybe that's what'll happen. Well, at least that's fair warning. Yeah, that's fair warning. I'm going to tag you for this, Nick. You can count on it. <laughs> Expense account item two, $2.40. Taxi to the east side rooming house of Kathy O'Dare. I didn't have much hope of turning up anything. Ed Rafferty and his men had already been through the place inch by inch. But it was the only starting point I had. The landlady was out and a uniformed policeman let me into Kathy's flat. I spent an hour and a half and got nowhere. I went through her mail, bills, advertisements, casual notes from men she'd met at the club. But nothing personal, not even a postcard. There were no pictures, photographs of Kathy or her daughter anywhere in the flat. She'd made a clean sweep, then left in a hurry. And obviously, she didn't mean to be found. But I had to find her, and fast. It was dusk when I left. The street lamps were on and the colored Christmas lights in the windows along the block. Snow was falling in big, soft, gentle flakes, and there was a holiday feeling in the air. It was neither the time nor the setting for murder. Make contribution, son. Give a little something to help poor. Oh, sure. How's it going this year, Santa? Oh, it's better than usual, but it just seems there's never enough to go around, no matter how. Well, bless you, son. Thank you kindly. No mention it. Good luck, Pop. Thank you, son. Well, the city ought to clean the streets better. I've been waiting for you. Sorry, Benny. It's not my day for punks. Get some friends who want to talk to you. Start walking, Johnny, down the alley. Uh Uh-uh. It's dark down there. Start walking. This ain't just my hand in my pocket. It better be, Benny, with two cops standing up there on the porch watching. What are you talking about? There ain't no cops. I smashed him in the mouth and knocked him flat. Followed it up and kicked his gun. All right. He rolled over, came to his feet, and rushed me. I was right, hoping he would. Right. See, he have that coming, son? He had it coming. Well, he, he sure did get it. Yeah. Hey, you know something, Pop? I think Benny wants to make a contribution to help the poor. Well, he ain't saying no. <laughs> oh, he's a good boy, at the moment at least. There you go. That ought to help some. Two, three, four... Five hundred dollars. Put it where it'll do the most good. Well, Merry Christmas, son. Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you, Pop, and many more of them. Hey, taxi! There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the next Shern Matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, an old lady with a broken arm... A shivering girl and bullets in the snow. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking.